Welcome to episode 8 of the very exciting Nero Car Engine Project. In this episode I'm going to cover three things. Firstly, the carb. Obviously it hasn't got a carb, so I need to uh, source a carb and make it fit. Secondly, um, I need to sort out a return spring on this. I, have, I did buy that, but it turns out it's not going to work, so I've actually ordered another one. A different design and see if I can make that work in the space I've got available. And the third thing is I need to set up the ignition timing on this. Now I don't know the exact timing that it needs to be, whether it's 12 degrees before top dead centre or 8 or whatever. But as it stands, I've got no way of knowing what the timing is anyway. So I need to do a few things to the engine, put a timing mark on it, find out where top dead centre is, uh, find out how many degrees to rotate it. Um, so there are the three things. And I think the first thing I'll kick off with is the carb. So we're starting off with the carb. Now this is the inlet manifold and the carb should bolt onto there. Now carbs for these engines are made out of pure unobtainium so, um, and it didn't come with one. So what I've done is I found this carb. Now this is an Amel carb and Amel, the company Amel was set up in the 20s. It was called the Amalgamated Carb Company and it was an amalgamation of, uh, of a few companies, Amac, Brown and Barlow and Binks. And in the late, in about 1930, they changed it to Amol from Amalgamated. And the design is essentially very, very similar to this, the sort that you'd find on one of these engines. And this is actually off a British Seagull outboard motor. And these little outboard motors are two-stroke engines, just like this one. About three or four horsepower, just like this one. So um, it should work. And this is a little shroud that screws on there. Um, it's got a shroud because obviously you don't want water flying in there. Doesn't really matter on this, so I actually might I might cut that off. This uh, this lever is a very simple choke mechanism, which I might well keep. Um, the only slight snag is that that is not the same as that. It's very similar. Now I was considering machining that out, but this body is made out of steel, and you'd have to have the whole thing spinning and I'd have to grip it by the threads. It's all a bit rubbish. So what I'm going to make is a male-female adapter, a thing that slides over that and slides into that. I'm just going to make it out of aluminium and I'm going to use that to connect those two together. So that's the first job, make this uh, adapter to fit the carbon. I've been progressing the connector, which is going to connect the inlet manifold to the car. So I've made these two pieces. So this piece, slots over there quite nicely it's a nice tight fit uh, and then this piece slides into there which is a nice tight fit and then the carb will slide onto there like that so it'll end up uh, probably out of shot but it'll end up on this on the on the um, engine like this so all i need to do now is weld these two pieces together so I'll clamp them very firmly like that put a couple of tacks in probably four tacks and then run a, a weld around there I might then file it all out because TIG welded parts on a hundred year old engine doesn't feel right but it'll hopefully it'll sort of look you know reasonable uh, I've also had a bit of a play with this carb and I took the top of the float chamber on and there's all this horrible rusty kind of gunge coming out so i'm obviously going to have to take a look at the carb and probably take it to pieces and find out what's going along the rusty water in there it looks all right but it just needs it looks like it needs a bit of a clean so yeah next up is to uh, clean the carb weld that up fettle it a bit so it doesn't look quite so 21st century and uh, i'll also have to cut in uh, some slots some radial slots a bit like that's got some radial slots there and I've got to come up with some kind of clamp going there. I don't want to stick a Jubilee clamp on there, it'll look terrible. So I've got to work out how I'm going to clamp that, get a clamp from somewhere. So that's the story so far. So I had a change of plan and I was going to weld those two aluminium parts together. But I thought instead I would use this solder and solder them together. And I bought this from a show and I've used it in the past, it worked really well. but. This time, it didn't, <laughs> and I completely 
destroyed those pieces that I carefully machined up and melted them. Um, so then I started to machine up another one to do it again and this time weld it and I thought, you know what, sod it. I'm just going to make it out of solid block. So no welding, no soldering. I'm just going to machine the whole piece out one solid block. It's going to take ages on my not brilliant lathe, but um, it should look quite nice, be quite satisfying. So yeah, uh, as a wise man once said, you got to fuck about to find out. So I've now found out that that doesn't work. So bit of lathe, bit of quality lathe time coming up. So after a bit of lathe time, we go from that to that, which is the new, new improved part, which in hindsight I should have made all along. So obviously that goes on there like that, and that goes on there like that. Tighten that clamp up, it grips quite nicely on there. Um, I've actually found a clamp on eBay for a, an old um, Amor carb. A 29 mil clamp. I've machined that down to 30 mil. So uh, I'm going to get the clamp uh, and offer it up, and then just take down the a little bit, leave a little lip on there, and and, and cut some slots in here as well. And that should be um, that should be good. Should be good to go. Uh, so I think next I'll turn my attention to ignition timing. Ha ha! I lied. I'm not doing the ignition timing next. I'm going to do the return spring because. This has just turned up in the post. And this is a, it's a kickstart return spring off some old British bike. I don't know, Norton or something? I don't know what it is. Uh, it's basically like a, a watch clock spring. So that's going to go in there somehow. Haven't quite worked out how. Actually, I've got a cunning idea. I have a plan. I'm going to make a spacer that goes in there with a slot in it. And then wrap it round and hook it over a pin that comes out here. That's the plan anyway, so first thing I've got to uh, do is make a, a, a spacer that goes in here, the correct width with a slot, and then that, that spacer has to be connected to that somehow. I haven't quite worked out how, but I'll think of something. So, to be continued. And after a bit more quality lathe time, I've made this spacer with a slot in it. And the slot engages, it's obviously better this way around, the slot engages in the spring like this and this will go over this shaft and here like this I'd actually go that way around and the end of the spring is fixed and the center bit will be uh, attached to the kickstart so when the kickstart rotates backwards it's going against the spring so all I need to do now is to engage this with this and the way I'm going to do it is, is drill a hole through there carry on into the uh, steel uh, kickstart quadrant and then probably going to drill uh, tap uh, a pin inside there possibly I haven't quite decided um, or I could tap a pin in there to be continued, we'll see what I do when I do it. So the method I settled on in the end was just to drill a hole in here, drill a hole in there. This has got a pin, which is just a turned down length of bolt. That pin just engages in there like that. So the way it all goes together is that that slots onto there like that. I can feed this bolt in like that. Come on, in you go. Then I can kickstart on and engage the pin in the hole. Put it through. Uh, should just take a washer in there. 
It actually has two washers in there. Can I fit two in? No, one will do. Um, spacer goes on there and the nut on there. Do that later. And all I do is pull that round, push it underneath there and hook it on. And now the whole thing is spring loaded. It's quite a nice tension of spring. Bring it back quite nicely. Job done. So the next job definitely will be ignition timing. Now we're finally getting around to talking about ignition timing. So the ignition timing is expressed in a number of degree, degrees before top dead centre. So that's B, T, D, C. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is work out where top dead centre is. Now to do that, we need some kind of reference point. Um, there can be some position of this flywheel where the piston's right at the very top, but we need to, to mark that. Now we can't mark that. Typically you'd mark it against something like this, but this bit rotates, so you can't mark it against that. So we're going to need some kind of pointer. So what I'm going to do is make some kind of pointer that screws to the side just there. And that will be our reference point. So somewhere we will find top dead centre and I'll put a mark just there like that, which corresponds to top dead centre. And the way that we'll find top dead centre is we'll put this dial gauge through the spark plug hole. I've got to make some kind of adapter and we'll turn this round. And when it gets to a position and then change direction, that's top dead centre. And that will give us our reference point. But we know that the spark has to happen. In other words, the points have to open at some degrees before top dead center. So if this was, if top dead center is there, it would have to be about there where the spark goes. So we can, we know what the, the circumference is. So we can divide it into degrees, work backwards, and that will give us the point at which we have to have a spark. And that's the point where the points open so we can connect a simple test up to the points, wire it up, maybe a light bulb or something, and that will uh, give us the point where the the um, the points open. And we'll adjust this so that we're getting the correct number of, of degrees. Sounds complicated. <laughs> it's not too bad. Anyway, first things first, let's make that and let's find out where top dead centre is. So continuing with the uh, ignition timing and I've made two things. I've made this brass pointer and that goes on there like that and it's a reference point for marking on top dead centre on the flywheel. Why brass? Because I thought brass was quite nice and it's sort of in keeping with the whole hundred year old aura of the machine and the other thing I made is this little aluminium top hat and this goes down the spark plug hole and it's got a hole down the middle and inside that is going to sl slot this uh, dial gauge so we can actually monitor the position of the piston as it goes up and down. So the next thing I'm going to do is fit these two. Right, they're now fitted, both fitted on. Got little brass screws in there which look quite nice. And um, we can use the dial gauge to work out top dead centre. So if I rotate it, You'll see that the dial gauge spins round, it stops momentarily and it goes back the other way. Now that corresponds to the piston being very, at the very, very top. So I can just adjust this round so that it's turning round at zero. Now zero is basically top dead centre. And what you can quite, what you can do is, as I'm going round, I can mark on there, I can, as it's going, I can mark 90 just there. And I keep on going and on the way back down it's 90 just there so that tells me top dead center is going to be pretty much bang in the middle just there so that is now top dead center i've only marked it on sharpie doesn't really matter what i use uh, so now the next step is to work out where the points are opening and closing with respect to top dead centre. So I'm going to mark T, D, C on there. 
so next I'm going to set up some kind of test so we know when the points are opening and closing. So now we're going to do a little experiment to work out what the ignition timing of this thing actually is. So I've set the points gap at uh, ten thousandths of an inch using this feeler gauge, which is quite important because that, that affects the ignition timing. I've set that. And the way it works is that as the flywheel, the flywheel goes round in this direction, and as it goes round, the points will be opened. And once the, when the points close, the coil starts to charge and it carries on going around and then when the points open again that's when you get the spark <coughs> so it's that opening again point that we're looking for so what i've done i've set up this multimeter here i'm going to put it on resistance and it's all i'm doing is measuring the resistance across the points so when the points are open uh, there is no flow but when the points are closed it'll make a buzzing noise so as the flywheel goes round I'm getting, a, I'm getting a, a noise now, which means the points are closed. So I'll keep on going and I keep on going and I keep on going. This is top dead centre. Keep on going and eventually goes out. Goes out? I mean, it stops. <laughs> the noise goes out. So that means the points have just opened there. So that's top dead centre. And given it's going around in that direction, it's opened that far before top dead center btdc before top dead center oops so the question is how many degrees is that well i know that the diameter is 237 millimeters so um, 2 pi r is 2 pi r divided by 360 or pi d divided by 360 gives me 2.1 degrees uh, 2.1 millimeters per degree okay and if i get a ruler i can measure this and i can see it's about seven centimeters so what's that it's about 35 degrees now to me 35 degrees advance 35 degrees before top dead centre seems like a bonkers advanced uh, ignition timing. But hey, what do I know? Um, apparently these old engines, because the combustion chamber is so large, the, it's, it's quite, uh, the ignition timing is quite retarded. Now you can adjust this by rotating this back plate, but not much. Five degrees either way maybe. So if I, if I moved it all the way in, in one direction, I might get it to be 30 degrees before top dead center uh, but to be honest right now i'm not going to worry too much about it i'm just going to basically stick some fuel in it and try and kick it over and see what happens so um that was an interesting exercise <laughs> a broad rather academic to find out what the ignition timing is but i'm not really going to play around with it um yeah i think the only thing remains now is to is to finish off that uh carb I've got to get the bracket here and I've got to clean the cob. I might I might uh, roll that into the next episode. So that is now the end of episode eight. There's going to be one more. There's going to be two more episodes. Episode nine is going to be all about the exhaust, the fuel tank and finishing that off. And episode 10 is going to be, fingers crossed, starting the engine. Um, will it start? Who knows? That's the $64 million question. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's thrilling episode. Uh, until next time.